Hi and welcome to this video where we're going to be looking at the carbonyls chapter. So the carbonyl group, um, C double bond, or you'll see it in the aldehyde, ketone, carboxylic acid, ester and acid chloride in this. You should be aware of some basic tests for this, so you've encountered um, one of them at AS. In terms of being able to separate between aldehyde and the ketone, Tollens reagent, so what would you see with an aldehyde? You'd see a silver mirror precipitate. What would you see with a ketone? Nothing. So the reason for that, it's just to do with that the aldehyde can be oxidized further to the carboxylic acid, whereas the ketone cannot. So Tollens is just a mild oxidizing reagent. So you'll have probably seen what an oxidizing agent is when you've been looking at potassium dichromate. So how you get your primary alcohol, potassium dichromate oxidizing agent, that goes to the aldehyde and then obviously on the carboxylic whereas the secondary alcohol gives you the ketone so basic test to be aware of first and um, now the main mechanism which gets introduced in this is nucleophilic addition so you've done nucleophilic substitution in the past this is nucleophilic addition so we are just going to add something on to this actual compound substitution like football style you swap one thing for another so again remember what the definition of a nucleophile is it's an electron pair donor so we've got our nucleophile here we've got an electron pair you do sometimes see this as cn in the minus over here doesn't really matter it's just when similar when people are lazy writing oh minus but you must have your lone pair on the carbon right if you don't do that if you put the lone pair on the nitrogen you lose marks so lone pair on the carbon So why is it going to attack this carbonyl compound? Well, if you think about it, the electronegativity difference between the oxygen and the carbon. The carbon is electron deficient. The oxygen is pulling electrons away in that bond. So the cyanide group here, it can attack that carbon. So start at your lone pair point of the carbon. Carbon can only have four bonds, so that will break. And what will happen is there will be some hydrogen ions floating around in your solution. Um, you wouldn't use HCN for this, by the way. HCN is very toxic and it's a gas. Gases obviously get around nice and easy. If you breathe in HCN, you are dead. There is no real cure for it. So what they tend to use is things like the potassium cyanide, the sodium cyanide, things like that in solution. So as I said, there's going to be some H plus ions floating about from somewhere. And effectively, you just grab onto one of those. So there we have it. What we formed here is a hydroxy nitrile. So in order to name this, obviously we would need to know the length of the, the carbon chain there. Um, but you would just have hydroxy at the front. So where the hydroxy is, um, if there is any branches, so sort of if my longest chain is coming down here. So if I had CH2, CH2, CH3, and just a CH3 there, it would be two hydroxy, two methyl, and then one, two, three, whatever butan nitrile so forth there so the organic naming make sure you can do that for this it usually asks you to name the product for these things but there is the mechanism so a nuclear file here and as you can see all we are doing is effectively sticking things on so it's pure addition for this Um, I have seen on the exams, by the way, asked sort of which would go faster, an aldehyde or a ketone. So here we've got a ketone. If we attacked an aldehyde, so like that, what you need to think about with this is the inductive effect. So the inductive effect, think of it sort of um, the amount of friends you've got around you, sort of that are willing to lend you electrons. 
any alkyl group they are electron releasing so what it means is they because this carbon is electron deficient the more friends around it the more friends that are willing to sort of lend their electron cloud and this would therefore be less positive so in a ketone there is less of a scent attracting this nucleophile whereas in an aldehyde it only has one alkyl group around it so the positive sign there the delta positive it's going to be bigger because there's not as many friends borrowing it in electron clouds so the cyanide group would react with the aldehyde faster than the ketone Now suppose you didn't want to actually add the nitrile group there and the nitrile is usually done to extend the carbon chain because we can get rid of the, the nitrogens after and things like that. Suppose you just want to actually reduce this, keep the carbon chain length the same but just crack open that double bond. They use something called sodium borohydride there, so NaBH4. You don't use the lithium one, too powerful, very dangerous chemical. And what this actually does is, you don't need to know the mechanism for it, but it releases H- ions. So just like that. So the mechanism occurs in exactly the same way. Again, remember, show your lone pair. Remember, double-headed arrow, movement of two electrons. So it's going to attack the carbon. Bond in there will break. And likewise, some hydrogen ions from the solution. You will just attack that. <clears throat> And you can therefore reduce your aldehyde or ketone back to the alcohol what it started as. So either the primary alcohol for the aldehyde or the secondary alcohol here for the ketone. So if I wanted to write that out in equation form, I would just have whatever my aldehyde or ketone was. And then goes to my product here. So shorthand, this means reduction. Remember there's two of them. You're going to be adding one there and then another H there. So it's just the H's. Don't write H2. You're not adding hydrogen in this. So two H in square brackets. Just like when you've seen oxidation, the O in square brackets. So H like that. Right, so now looking at carboxylic acids. So carboxylic acids are weak acids. Weak acid only partially dissociates. So it only actually releases a small amount of hydrogen ions. It does still behave as an acid though. So one of the tests for it, chuck in some sodium carbonate. And what you will see as one of the products, CO2. So the CO2 effervescence, you will just see bubbling away. So that's one of the tests for carboxylic acids. Now, you do need to know the properties of them in terms of that the, the melt and boiling point of these things is a bit higher than normal because of hydrogen bonds. But you should just be able to recap AS, intra and intermolecular bonding to sort of be aware of all the things like that. So looking at covalent, so double covalent there, single covalent, what a hydrogen bond is, so how it could form with hydrogen bonds with itself so forth. Um, one of the main reactions which you do need to know for this is esterification. So we will say our ethanoic acid there and we are going to react it with methanol. Now what happens in this is that the OH from the carboxylic acid 
and the H from the, the alcohol there, they are removed as water. So esterification is a condensation reaction. You pull water off from it. And what effectively happens is this carbon just joins to this oxygen here. So the bond from there, what it's missing, and likewise bond from missing there, they come round and they bond to each other. Like that. Now, actually being able to name, you do need a catalyst for this to occur as well, by the way. Um, sulfuric acid, so that's your good safe one. Sulfuric acid for most of the mechanism, for, sorry, for the catalyst for most of the reactions you'll encounter early on. Now, people tend to have trouble naming esters. Easiest way to do it, find where this oxygen single bond it is and put a line through it like that. Now, whichever side has got the carbon double bond oxygen, that is the side which came from the carboxylic acid. The side without it, that side came from the alcohol. Now, naming it, you name the alcohol first as sort of a branch. So, methyl, because there's only one carbon there. There is two carbons. Remember to count that one. So methyl ethanoate. And again, you can just look at the structure of this for what you need to actually make it. Imaginary line through there. Well, I need two carbons in my carboxylic acid, so ethanoic acid. And I need one carbon in my alcohol, so methanol. So those are the two things I would need to stick together to make it. The reaction would exist in equilibrium, by the way. You could go backwards as well. I'll just show that. So going backwards, again, you need your sulfuric acid catalyst. With water there, it will be a hydrolysis reaction. So hydrolysis, using water to break bonds. So the water there with the catalyst, you can go backwards. You can crack open your ester and get back to your carboxylic acid and methanol. Now, if you had any base around, so sodium hydroxide as an example, it would not exist in equilibrium. The reason why, well obviously this is a weak acid, this is a base. Your base is going to react with that. If you remove that from the system, so if you start forming the, the carbonates, um, then what will happen is the equilibrium will push that way to stop trying to produce more and more of it. Obviously, you keep using it up. Effectively, you would end up going to completion that way if you use sodium hydroxide as your catalyst for this. So sodium hydroxide and water, you would end up going to completion. You wouldn't produce this because what you would get instead... is that you would get effectively the metal carbonate. So this is sodium ethanoate. So you name it in exactly the same way as you named that. Obviously this side, you can imagine being the alcohol -y side, so sodium. How many carbons there from the carboxylic acid? Two, so sodium ethanoate. So that's how you name the actual metals like that. Now the esters have quite a lot of uses in industry. Um, perfumes, so they're nice smelling, so quite a lot of them taste nice as well. Um, the fats, the oils, so obviously fats are solid stuff at room temperature, oils the liquid. Um, solvents they're useful for and plasticizers, so drain pipes, fairly tough plastic, whereas um, if you want to sort of bring it down to say waterproof coats like that, the plastic on that, then you can change sort of how rigid it is for the different uses. Um, now, you, if you do biology, you've probably seen glycerol, so one, two, sorry, prop, propane one, two, three, triol. That 
Now you can go sort of to the fats from there, effectively just reacting it with the long chain carboxylic acids and you end up with the, the triester on those. Now there are some natural triesters which they break down to get you sort of the, the biodiesels and things like that. If I had my long chain ester, So I'm not going to write them out. Um, so these are just long carbon chains coming off these, 12 to 18 usually in length. Um, I can react that just the same as we've done before. If I use sodium hydroxide, then what I would get is effectively my long chain so uh, metal carbonate. So the sodium hydroxide under that cracks that just the same as before. Um, you would need water as well and you get this now the uses for those sort of detergents things like that you can put anionic surfactants so the difference between an anionic and a cationic it's just to do with a charge so you're looking at the charge here uh, but I tend to just tell people to write detergents it's usually a bit safer so how it works as a detergent well you've got your long chain here it's non-polar that non-polar bit will stick in the grease this polar head will stick in the water. And then you've got your polar head sticking out there like that. As you swoosh water around, you effectively grab that and it rips up some of the grease. So that's how they act as surfactants. Now, what else you can react it with is methanol. And what you would get reacting it with methanol is you would get a methyl ester. So again, you would get three of them there because effectively three of these cracking that up. So this you can get from sort of the rapeseed, the plant. And doing that, this methyl ester here, you can use that as biodiesel. So some of, some of that's typically put in fuels, about two and five percent, and car engines effectively they're renewable resource, the um, come from the biological source, what you've probably looked at in um, first year. Um, I will pause there since I want to do acylation, I don't want to rush it, so second part, acylation, we will look at the addition elimination mechanism as well. So the two main mechanisms in this topic are the nucleophilic addition and the addition elimination, so back with you in a minute.